Okay, welcome. Let me get my laser pointer. Woo! And some studies you're going to run into these path diagrams, and we can call them path studies. And you're going to run the, into them a lot depending upon which class you're in. And so it's good to uh, have a brief explanation of what they are. So before we watch this vid video, know about the basic experiments, watch that video. Uh, watch the videos on quasi-independent variables and Pearson's R. And so we're going to talk about path diagrams, the third variable problem, which is really important, uh, mediator variables and moderator variables. So uh, let's go back to the uh, basic experiment. And here's the uh, experiment that we uh, you know, talked about in that first set of videos. We have uh, you know, six-year-olds watching a control video versus some other six-year-olds watching a violent video. And then they have uh, recess for 30 minutes, and raiders count the number of aggressive acts. And the control group had an average of five aggressive acts, and the experimental group had an average of nine aggressive acts. And so that at least indicates these means that there was an effect of the type of video, the violent video, caused more aggression. Uh, however, we'd have to do a statistical analysis to know for sure. And we could graphically illustrate uh, this experiment by using a path diagram. And in a path diagram, you uh, put the variables in boxes. And so the IV is in a box, the DV is in a box, and you have an arrow indicating the relationship or lack of relationship between the variables. Here we have violent cartoons cause aggressive acts. And this is a very simple uh, path diagram because there's only two variables. Now, when we have a path diagram for an experiment, the arrow means caused, as in violent cartoons caused aggressive acts. Because this is an experiment, and one reason why we do experiments is that uh, we want to be able to assert cause that the IV causes the DV. And if we do the experiment correctly, we have that ability to do that. But in a quasi-experiment, the arrow now thing uh, means we think caused. And actually saying we think doesn't sound that certain. So we use the term covary. So violent cartoons covary with aggressive acts, or that the violent cart content of cartoons covaries with aggressive acts, uh, possibly as the violent level, violence level goes up, the number of aggressive acts the child commits later on will go up. Okay, so let's turn this experiment that uh, we talked about before into a real quasi-experiment. So uh, turning it into a quasi-experiment, the DV is going to stay the same. That's the number of aggressive acts recorded by the experimenters during 30 minutes of free play. But now we need a quasi-independent variable because we want to turn this into a quasi-experiment. So, uh, you know, the independent variable in the study we did before was a manipulated variable where some students saw a control condition of action cartoons without any violence, and the others saw action cartoons with violence. So the amount of violence in the cartoons varied between the two conditions. Now we're going to turn this into a quasi-independent variable, a measured independent variable. So uh, think for a second, how could we measure exposure to violent cartoons? And we're not manipulating, we're not giving them different levels of violent cartoons, but we want to measure it now. So stop the video and think for a minute or so about different ways that we could measure exposure to violent cartoons. Okay, well, I hope you stopped the video and thought about that. Uh, one way we could do that is we could send a questionnaire to the parents. These kids are six years old, so sending them a, a questionnaire uh, just may be a little bit too much for them. But in the questionnaire, we basically ask the uh, uh, parents, how much violent uh, cartoons, or could you rate the level of violence in the cartoons that your children watch? Or could you rate the number of hours of violent cartoons that your children watch? Or, so we send some type of questionnaire, which hopefully is a good questionnaire to the parents. 
And so this is now a quasi-independent variable, a measured independent variable. And then we correlate uh, the results of this uh, you know, uh, ind quasi-independent variable with the ratings of the aggressive acts on the playground seen by the experimenters. And that would be a, a decent quasi-experiment. But now let's get back to the question that I've been dancing around for a couple videos. Why can't we say caused with a quasi-independent variable? And it comes down to the idea of comparable conditions or the idea of control. This idea is that participants are treated equally, comparably, except for the independent variable. And so if there's any change in the dV, it must be due to the independent variable because that's the only difference. That is, because there's a, a comparability of conditions, uh, both done at 10 a.m., both done with 16, uh, 16, six-year-olds, uh, the videos, as you remember, are very similar. The only way they differ is in the amount of violence. And then the children are allowed to play for 30 minutes and observed, uh, and uh, acts are recorded in the same way. So the only difference between these two conditions is the violent content of the video. So if we do see more aggression in the kids in this condition, the only reason why we're seeing more here is because of the content of the video. And that's the idea of control. Now, let's see what happens when we go to the quasi-experiment. Uh, the IV is now the survey, or the quasi-IV is now the survey. Uh, parents rate a child's viewing of violent cartoons as high. Let's say that they do that for an example. So let me ask you the question, what does that mean? That is, when the parents, like you're the experimenter and you send out a really nice questionnaire to the parents, uh, could be different types of questionnaires, but you're going to get the questionnaires back and uh, they're good questionnaires, good reliability, good validity, and you get a number from a parent and it indicates how much violent cartoons the child watches. So what does that number mean? And what I'm really getting at is I want you to generate a list of reasons why a parent may respond by saying that their child is watching a lot of violent cartoons, but maybe the child is not watching a lot of violent cartoons at all. So uh, stop the video and take a couple minutes to think about the situation. So you're sending the parents a, a questionnaire and it says, oh, you know, uh, observe your kids and watch the number of cartoons they watch and you know estimate how violent they are and respond so uh, what could go wrong in that situation so stop the uh, video think about that and generate a list okay well uh, you know here's a, a lot of different reasons why something could be wrong uh, the parent may not know what the child is watching. So uh, they have a questionnaire and so they just guess. Or the parent may be motivated to think that their son is a real man and that they watch a lot of violent cartoons when the son doesn't really do that. Or the child turns on the violent cartoons but doesn't watch them and uses them as background noise. So while the parent correctly sees that the violent cartoons are on, the child is not really paying attention to them. Or maybe the siblings watch the violent cartoons and the target child is in the same room, but they're not really watching the cartoons. So the parents would rate uh, the uh, violent cartoon exposure as high, but the target child may be disinterested in what the siblings are watching and doing something else. So these are all reasons why uh, that uh, quasi-independent variable may tell us one thing, but it may you know, actually mean something else. And essentially, this is a third variable problem. That is, we are talking about this here, the relationship between violent cartoons and aggressive acts. But what if, just say for example, the aggressive parent's explanation was true? That is, you have an aggressive parent that thinks aggression is good, and so they get this uh, questionnaire from a, a, you know, a psychologist at the school saying, how much violent uh, cartoons do your kids watch? And the parent says, well, my son is, you know, really, you know, 
you know, aggressive, you know, uh, you know, uh, in control person, and so they watch a lot. And so the quasi independent variable uh, is rated as high. And then the child basically then goes to school and they're being affected by the parents and their parents are being aggressive and the aggressive parents treat the child aggressively so the child acts aggressively. And so what's going on is that this variable here, which we didn't measure, which is an unmeasured third variable, aggressive parents, that's influencing the reporting of the violent cartoons and it's also influencing the number of aggressive acts by the fact that the parent is doing things to the child to make them more aggressive. And so it's the idea that aggressive parents are causing this variable to be high and this variable to be high. So if violent cartoon watching and aggressive acts are high because of the aggressive parents, of course there'll be a relationship between violent cartoons and aggressive acts, but we'll call that a spurious, and spurious means fake or false, false relationship. That is, there could be a correlation between these two variables, but once we take into account the aggressiveness of the parents, then that correlation will go to zero. And that's pretty much the definition of a spurious relationship. When you take into account these third variables, the uh, relationship you're looking at goes to zero. The correlation goes to zero. This is the third variable problem. And there are no third variable problems with manipulated variables. When you manipulate a variable, and I'd have to also say you have comparable conditions, you will not have a third variable problem. Uh, what this means is a third variable may be affecting the quasi-IV and the DV at the same time. Uh, is the quasi-IV affecting the DV or is there a third variable? You don't know. And you don't know because you haven't manipulated the independent variable. Uh, you don't know what the relationship between the quasi-IV and the DV is. And uh, you know that it's not the IV caused the DV. You have no idea which is going on here. Is it? Is there a relationship between the IV and the DV, or is there no relationship? You just don't know. And that's the third variable problem. All right, so uh, let's do a little quiz. Uh, these correlations are spurious. That is, when you actually measure these things in real life, uh, you get a correlation between them. And they're really not uh, actual correlations. They're spurious. They're false. Uh, there's a third variable causing them. So uh, I'll go over them after I'm done, stop the video, and think about reasons why uh, these correlations may be wrong. So the first example is that there's a positive correlation between ice cream sales and the numbers of drownings at Coney Island. So uh, of course that means that ice cream causes drownings. So we wanted to get rid of drownings, we stopped selling ice cream. Uh, there's a positive correlation between the number of churches in a city and the number of crimes committed. This of course means that more churches in a city causes more crime. Something about religion makes people want to commit crimes. Uh, there's a positive correlation between going to church and how long you live. And of course that means that being religious uh, means that you're going to live a longer life. And there's a positive correlation between body weight and vocabulary size. That is, fat people know more words, or being fat causes you to learn more words. So these are all spurious correl uh, co correlations. Uh, stop the video and come up with possibilities for why these are spurious, that is, what third variable is causing all of these. Okay, I hope you did that. Uh, so the third variable for the Coney Island example is temperature. That is, there's no correlation between the number of drownings uh, and the number of ice cream sales directly. It's a spurious relationship. What's causing it is temperature. As the temperature rises, more people buy ice cream because it's hot and they want something cool. 
also as the temperature rises, more people are swimming, and so therefore more people are drowning. And so that is the third variable that causes the spurious relationship between uh, ice cream sales and drownings. Uh, there's a positive correlation between the number of churches in a city and the number of crimes committed. Uh, that's easy. It's city size. Uh, there's no relationship in, uh, between the number of churches and the number of crimes. That's spurious. However, the third variable is the size of the city. The bigger the city, the more churches. The bigger the city, the more crimes. There's a positive correlation between going to church and how long you live. Uh, and that's a spurious correlation. Uh, people who have a certain personality type, which would make them watch their health and be careful about things that are dangerous, they are more likely to go to church. And so these people are going to be more likely to go to church and they're going to be more likely to do things that would guarantee them a long life. There's no relationship between church going and living longer. And it's not that uh, being fat makes you learn more words, uh, but uh, it's the idea of age. That is, when I was five years old, I had a much smaller vocabulary than I do now. Uh, however, I had a much uh, smaller waistline as I do now. And that's what causes the correlation between body weight and vocabulary size. Not that, you know, the fatter you get, the more words you learn, but that age is the third variable. Okay, so let's talk about using that third variable. Can we use the third variable to help us? Yes. Uh, but you have to know what that third variable is. You have to know which third variable you're dealing with. And once you do, you can use something called statistical path analysis to actually look at violent cartoons, that quasi-independent variable, aggressive acts, and then you need to identify and measure the third variable, aggressive uh, parents. And then once you do that, you do the statistical path analysis, and it will show you that once you take away the effect of aggressive parents from these other variables, there's no relationship between violent cartoons and aggressive acts. So that's uh, the idea. Let's take a look at an example. Uh, Chen et al. 2015. How does a servant leader uh, fuel the service fire? How does a servant leader fuel the service fire? Uh, Multi-level model of servant leadership, individual self-identity, group comp uh, competition, climate, and customer service performance. And take a look for a minute at the uh, uh, abstract and stop the video to read it. Try to identify some of the variables. And, oh, here's a bigger version of it. I don't know if you're going to need that or not. And in the study, uh, they present this path diagram. And here we have the boxes, which indicate different variables, and the arrows, which indicate different paths, paths between these variables. And ignore for a minute that some are full and some are dashed. And so what they're saying is that we have some variables, such as transformative leadership, uh, servant leadership and competition climate. We have other variables such as social identity mediators and we have other variables uh, such as customer service performance. And the arrow direction is showing what they think the causal direction is or essentially what they think the covariation is. That servant leadership covaries with social identity mediators because all of these are measured variables and there are no manipulated variables. So let's take a look at, uh, you know, the first thing in this path diagram. We have here transformational leadership affects social identity mediators and customer service performance. And essentially, transformational leadership is one of those third variables. And they're saying that, yes, indeed, there's a relationship between social identity mediators and customer service performance. Uh, that relationship is going to be affected by transformational leadership affecting both at the same time. And they will do a statistical analysis, a path analysis, where they remove 
the effects of transformational leadership from this relationship here to see what happens to that relationship, whether it's spurious or real. Then they also look at a mediator variable. Uh, and here in blue is an example of a mediator variable. Uh, they say that servant leadership affects customer service performance, but it only does that through servant leadership affecting this intermediary or mediator variable, social identity. So social identity is a mediator variable in that any effects of servant leadership are mediated or have to go through social identity mediators in order to affect customer service. And then finally we have this. They say that competition climate, that is how competitive uh, the workplace is, that's going to influence the relationship between uh, the self-identity mediators, these self-identity variables, and customer service performance. And this is actually a moderator variable. That is, when you have something that looks like this, where an arrow comes in and actually connects with another path, that's a moderator variable. And what that essentially is saying is that competition climate moderates the relationship between social identity and customer service. What does moderate mean? It means that how social identity affects customer service depends upon, and that's the key idea, depends upon competition climate. Moderators influence the strength and or direction of the relationship between the quasi-IV and the DV. So in this case, group identification, the authors assume, has a stronger positive relationship with service performance only when, group ha when the group has a higher competitive group climate. So when you have a stronger group competitive climate, this relationship is stronger. And that's what a moderator variable is. That is, uh, the influence of the quasi-IV depends upon uh, the moderator and it changes in terms of its strength or direction. So depending upon this moderator variable, the strength of this relationship, this correlation, or actually the direction may change. And that's what a moderator variable is. Okay, so as a quiz, define a mediator variable and define a moderator variable. Uh, go back, stop the video, go back and take a look. Okay, I never gave you a direct definition of a mediator variable, but what you could do is this. Uh, you know, take what I said, servant leadership, uh, affects customer service only through social identity and just delete the specifics and make it general. One variable affects another variable only through a third variable and that's what a mediator is. The quasi-IV affects the DV only through a third variable through a third variable. And then define the moderator variable. I didn't answer that uh, I'm not going to because I gave you a direct definition of what a moderator variable is and you should be able to go back and find that. Okay, so that's the lecture. Uh, here's your study guide. Uh, what's a moderator variable? Give an example. Uh, what's a third variable problem? Give an example. Define a mediator. Define a moderator. Be able to read a path diagram and identify the quasi-IVs, the DVs, the moderators, and the mediator relationships. All right, bye-bye.